Today we're speaking with Dr. Sylvia Franceschi. She is head of the section of infections and head of infections and cancer epidemiology group at the International Agency for Research on Cancer. Her lecture is Differences in Global Cancer Incidents, Burden, Outcome, and Future Predictions. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Franceschi. Thank you for inviting me. Would you describe the subject of your lecture? My lecture was meant to attract attention to the fact that uh, despite uh, less developed countries in the world uh, are still fighting with a lot of uh, communicable diseases, uh, malaria, tuberculosis, uh, HIV, they are increasingly affected by cancer. This is in part uh, due to the fact uh, that uh, the the, the, the many children uh, that were born uh, in the last uh, two or three decades uh, are uh, now going to live much longer than in the past. And we all know that uh, cancer is a disease of the elderly. And in fact, uh, my institution, who produce uh, regularly estimate about uh, the cancer burden uh, in different parts of the world, for the first time in 2008, has shown uh, that more cancer and more cancer deaths occur in uh, less developed countries than in developed countries, about 60 percent uh, now compared uh, to very different statistics in the past. Uh, so cancer is becoming a reality and it's paradoxically to some extent uh, the side effect of, uh, uh, of some improvement uh, in the health conditions uh, in, in poor countries. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's also important to realize uh, that still now the pattern of cancer in uh, less developed countries is uh, different than uh, in uh, the richest countries of the world. We have many problems in common. For instance, smoking is a very important cause uh, of cancer death. Lung cancer is also uh, growing in uh, developing countries. But something special in developing countries is uh, the great importance uh, of cancers uh, due to chronic infections. And just to name the most important one, I would say uh, cancer of the cervix, uterine in women, cancer of the liver, cancer of the stomach. Those are uh, the cancer where uh, less developed countries show the highest uh, incidence and much higher than in our uh, countries. It's a, a relatively recent uh, discovery that a high proportion of cancer are due to chronic infections, but the difference between uh, different parts of the world is important. We consider now that about 8% of cancer in uh, developed countries are due to infection versus 26% uh, in developing in countries. Now, the predominant uh, importance of infections in poor countries uh, is uh, not uh, completely bad news uh, in as much as at least uh, knowing the causes of the predominant cancers in those places can help uh, to shape uh, uh, preventive uh, strategies. And uh, I think it's important to mention that uh, in respect to liver cancer, the success of uh, vaccination against hepatitis B virus, especially in the last 10 years, gives a real hope to eliminate hepatitis B and uh, the liver cancer fraction related to hepatitis B in a generation or two. Conversely, we have another important virus, hepatitis C virus, which is not uh, easy to prevent, it's not easy to control, and in this moment, in many parts uh, of the world, especially in Asia, we have a large and neglected epidemic of hepatitis C virus, which are uh, often uh, spread through uh, unsafe uh, injections, but n n not only like in our countries, uh, drug addicts, it's really still a problem of unsafe injection practices in the medical system. And uh, I would also like to mention uh, the very important influence of HIV in countries like uh, sub-Saharan African countries where uh, 
the infection is very common, uh, the immune depression linked to HIV is an important cause of cancer, especially Kaposi's sarcoma that's become uh, cancer number one or two in many African countries. Anyhow, we have also uh, very important uh, potentials, and I would like uh, to mention last uh, uh, the enormous opportunities uh, that we have in this moment uh, to basically eliminate cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is unique in the cancer field because now we have a vaccine that's very, very good, uh, the vaccine against uh, the worst types of HPV, HPV 16, 18, and also we know pretty well how to organize screening programs against cervical cancer. The knowledge on the relationship between cervical cancer and HPV, papillomavirus, is now uh, pushing us uh, uh, to substitute pap smear with HPV testing. The bottom line is that cervical cancer in this moment is the only cancer where we have a vaccine and we have a screening model. So in principle, it uh, would be relatively easy to eradicate it in a couple of generations. The problem is that both uh, uh, vaccination against HPV and uh, screening remain very, very expensive. Uh, we, have, uh, we are not yet there in the richest countries of the world and it's very regrettable that in this moment uh, the new vaccine that uh, is uh, such an amazing uh, asset because vaccination is easier than screening is now basically delivered only to the richest uh, countries in the world and uh, uh, we hope uh, that uh, the introduction of uh, vaccination against HPV will not take as long as introduction of vaccination against hepatitis B. So we really hope that uh, it will be uh, quicker and uh, it will not take uh, 20, 30 years to bring uh, a vaccine that exists also to the populations that uh, need it the most. According to the World Health Organization, by 2020, nearly 70% of all cancer deaths will be in economically disadvantaged countries. In your estimation, what are the main barriers to easing the global health disparities? Uh, I mean, I think that uh, I have already touched uh, some of the important issues concerning uh, the, the differences in the most important cancer, although we must be prepared to see also Western uh, cancer increase uh, in, uh, in uh, low resource and especially in middle resource countries because we can expect breast cancer increasing, were it not because uh, children uh, are uh, diminishing, uh, women uh, have children later than uh, they used to, they breastfeed less. Uh, Obesity is a growing problem, uh, perhaps not so much in, uh, in some uh, very, very poor countries, but certainly in intermediate uh, resource countries, especially in urban populations. So we, we can expect uh, our cancer to also become uh, a greater problem uh, over there. But, but basically, the problem is uh, how to control cancer with limited resources and most of all how to avoid uh, that uh, poor countries become uh, a sort uh, of uh, double uh, population with uh, the middle class uh, getting more or less uh, the same uh, drugs, the same treatment that we get but the majority of the population being completely left uh, out of the progresses. Uh, I am an epidemiologist, I don't have an answer for everything, but I do believe uh, that uh, prevention is uh, one of the best uh, solutions because prevention in the long run is cost effective uh, and especially in situations where we have uh, relatively simple uh, strategies like vaccination, like uh, simplified screening models, not uh, like uh, here in the United States, you know, to screen women every year. That's out of the question, but uh, vaccination and probably screening uh, 
couple of times in a woman's life may be enough to prevent the vast majority of cervical cancer in poor uh, countries. For other diseases, for other types of cancer, the situation is really uh, much more complicated. But uh, let's say uh, anti-smoking uh, strategies, prevention of obesity, prevention uh, of the spread uh, of cancer-related viruses. For instance, hepatitis C is spreading simply because uh, in, in many countries people still believe that injections work better than an oral treatment. We know that it's not the case. So um, it's, yeah. it's, there, are, there are things that are not very expensive but that can make uh, all the difference. What can governments and NGOs do to combat the cancer health disparities? They have uh, NGOs and uh, donors. I want to particularly mention the Global Alliance for vaccine for vaccine and immunization have done a lot. I was quoting the example of hepatitis B vaccination. Uh, I think that. Um, that again, uh, my view is that it would be important to, to concentrate on measures that are relatively simple and most of all that can apply to all uh, the social classes uh, in, uh, in, in a country. I think uh, there is a strong need uh, to develop a center of excellence in cancer treatment. I think that this is already in a relatively advanced phase in some, uh, in some uh, medium resource countries like China, like India, but I think that if we really want uh, these improvements uh, to, to be of, uh, to, to, to really benefit the majority of the population, the message is prevention, prevention, and prevention. Mm -hmm. So prevention. Uh, of uh, causes of cancer like smoking, uh, like uh, obesity, but uh, a lot of uh, emphasis on vaccination, a lot on, uh, of emphasis on uh, possibility to simplify our approaches like screening. Screening must be applied. Uh, we know that late diagnosis of cancer is a leading cause of worse survival of cancer patients in uh, poor countries and in our countries. but. We have to simplify our approaches and making them much, much, much more cost uh, effective than they are now, for instance, in the United States. And so NGOs uh, must uh, help, but also must encourage uh, evaluation of uh, different approaches. We, we need uh, to be very imaginative, imaginative and not just and, and I think actually there's still uh, much more room for uh, randomized clinical trials of uh, preventive intervention that most people now think of. Dr. Franceschi, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.